Hey guys, so we're only of GNA Reviews here with another Servant Spotlight, this time for Drake herself. As always, we'll be examining her stats and skills, as well as going over pointers on how to utilize her effectively, and an overall grade comparing her to how she stacks up to the other 5 star servants. I've also covered every single other new servant released with Okeanos, including the 3 stars, so please, if you haven't already, do be sure to check those out after this video. All the links will be in the description box. Now on to Drake's stats. Drake has a max HP of 12,830, which ties for the lowest among all 5 star riders and is on the very low end of all 5 star servants in general, with even a few 4 stars beating her out. Fortunately, her attack stat is slightly better with a max attack of 11,326 placing her just slightly below average among all 5 star riders and 5 stars in general. As for her skills, her first skill is Voyager of the Storm rank A+, which increases Noble Phantasm strength for one turn for all allies between 8.5 and 17%, and it increases attack for one turn for all allies between 8.5 and 17%, both depending on level. Golden Rule Rank B is her second skill, which increases her Noble Phantasm gain for 3 turns between 18-45%. to 45%. And Pioneer of the Stars Rank X is her final skill, it increases her Noble Phantasm gauge between 30-50%. to 50%. It also applies Invincibility Pierce to all her attacks for 3 turns, and it gives her 10 crit stars. Moving on to her passives, she has Magic Resistance Rank D, which increases debuff resist by 12.5%, and she has Riding Rank B, which increases quick card effectiveness by 8%. Next up are her deck and Noble Phantasm. She has a general all-rounder deck, Quick, Arts, Arts, Buster, Buster, with a Buster Noble Phantasm. Her Noble Phantasm is Golden Wild Hunt, which deals heavy damage to all enemies between 300 and 500% attack modifier depending on level, and it gains critical stars between 20 to 40 depending on overcharge. That can be upgraded via an interlude, which will increase the attack modifier between 400 to 600%. While Drake does have fairly low stats, you shouldn't immediately write her off. As I always say, a servant is defined by their skills, and in that regard, Drake fares a lot better. All of her skills are geared toward making sure she can Noble Phantasm fast and often. Golden Rule B is a solid skill when combined with Drake's two arts cards. It gives her really strong Noble Phantasm gain, and the fact that she's also a rider with crit star absorption means that she will be critting very often on her arts cards so you should have absolutely no problem charging your Noble Phantasm. And in that regard, Pioneer of the Stars pairs fantastically with Golden Rule, as it not only charges your Noble Phantasm gauge, but also grants you crit stars. So I suggest saving this skill for when you have a Brave Chain available for Drake, and then using it alongside Golden Rule. Chances are, you will be able to crit with a quick or arch card thanks to the stars you get, and then your Noble Phantasm gauge will skyrocket. You should also take note that Pioneer of the Stars does grant an Invincibility Pierce. This is very easy to forget about since it doesn't come into play very often, but any Servant that does have Invincibility Pierce or Evade Pierce is valuable, especially during events and challenge quests where enemies love to spam those skills. And it's even better that it lasts for 3 turns. But by far her best skill is Voyager of the Storm. This skill acts as both charisma and tactics in one, and it makes Drake quite a decent support buffer. Even using her skill when your own Noble Phantasm is not up, in order to buff another stronger ally, can come in handy. A 34% Noble Phantasm buff is quite powerful. And if you can get this skill off when your entire party has their Noble Phantasm charge, you can massively increase your overall damage. For that reason, I do recommend leveling Voyager of the Storm first, followed by Golden Rule, and then finally Pioneer of the Stars. You can also max Pioneer of the Stars before Golden Rule, but you do get more per level from Golden Rule than Pioneer of the Stars, since the crit star gain and invincibility on that skill do not scale with level. 
It is also worth noting that Drake's Noble Phantasm is a buster, meaning that she can bust her Brave Chain for significantly more damage, and the crit stars that it produces can really help you charge your Noble Phantasm again after you use it, if you're lucky enough to crit on an Arts card. Drake has pretty much all her bases covered. Her Noble Phantasm and Pioneer of the Stars make her decent at crit generation. She specializes in charging and spamming her Noble Phantasm. And she has a pretty good party-wide buff. All of this sets her up to be a strong rider. But she's not without her weaknesses. Her major problem being an AoE Noble Phantasm. While it makes for very efficient farming, she isn't ideal in boss fights as even with her skill and the Buster Brave Chain, her single target damage is just really low. And given that her class in particular is filled with servants, notorious for having ridiculously strong Noble Phantasms, hers just feels very lackluster. It's a good thing that she can spam it because otherwise it would be pointless. And also while it is a more minor issue, her lack of any crit damage boosting skills can be a problem because while the crit stars do a good job of charging her Noble Phantasm when she crits, she isn't going to be doing as much damage as some of the other riders or archers. And if she manages to take stars from a stronger damage dealer on your team due to her incredibly high star absorption rate, it could be an issue so just be mindful of that when pairing her with Gil or Emiya or anyone else who loves to crit. Speaking of which, outside of stealing some stars here and there, Drake makes for a fantastic addition to pretty much any team. Like Arturia, she functions well as an all-rounder with a strong buff and very good wave clear. She can be utilized as a semi-support buffer alongside more dedicated supports like Waver, Hans, and David. To buff a more offensive servant like Herc or any other Berserker or Altera, and this is especially the case if you have Drake's Bondcraft Essence, but more on that later. If you want to use Drake as your primary attacker, then she pairs exceedingly well with Caesar since he can add some damage to her crit attacks with his third skill, and he can even up her crit star generation after his strengthening quest. Shakespeare can also help in the Noble Phantasm department by not only buffing her buster damage, but also charging her Noble Phantasm gauge and increasing her star generation by a ton after his strengthening quest. And finally, if you're desperate for crit star generators because you don't have Atlanta or anybody else, Drake can make for a decent star generator for servants like Emia or Lancelot or Mary Reed, though be aware she will take a considerable amount of stars if you don't have a star absorption skill or craft essence active. Now for her Bondcraft Essence, Golden Rudder, it increases Noble Phantasm damage of all allies on the field by 20%. This is definitely a Bondcraft Essence worth getting and using on her. It makes Drake's viability as a support buffer shoot through the roof. With the Craft Essence and Voyager of the Storm, she could potentially give a whopping 54% Noble Phantasm damage increase to the entire team. Besides that, Limited Zero and Heaven's Feel and their lower rarity counterparts are great for bolstering Drake's damage and making her Noble Phantasm notably stronger. Kaleidoscope is also a viable choice and perfect for farming any events and daily missions. And finally, it is a bit unorthodox, but if you really want to push Drake's Noble Phantasm spamming ability, Prisma Cosmos and Divine Banquet can really accelerate her Noble Phantasm charge to pretty ludicrous levels. Overall, Drake is a very well-balanced rider. Her stats are low, but her skills are great. She can perform a number of roles and is probably the most flexible and versatile rider in that regard. She can definitely fit into a lot of teams. And when it comes to wave clearing and farming, there simply isn't a better rider. Drake is ideal for farming. But much like Arturia, being a jack of all trades doesn't help you stand out anywhere, and her Noble Phantasm damage is very disappointing, even if she can spam it. Other lower rarity riders like Ushi and Mary Reed simply do a better job at getting through bosses and much of the harder content. With all that in mind, Drake gets a solid B rating from me. I think she is a strong rider, definitely deserves her status as a 5 star, and she's capable of competently doing whatever it is you need her to do, but she does struggle to excel at anything outside of farming. But if you do roll her, definitely invest in her and use her, you won't regret it, 
I know I've personally used her in many different team comps and scenarios, so she is definitely in it for the long run. And those are my thoughts on Drake. I'm sure some of you will disagree, but I'd love to discuss this stuff with you guys and hear your thoughts, so please let me know in the comments. Also, let me know if you rolled her or anyone else in the gotcha. And if you haven't already, please check out the other Okeanos Servant Spotlights. They're all linked in the description box. And don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, or consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. There's plenty more Fate Grand Order content to come, so do look forward to all of that. And alright guys, I'll see you in Okeanos. Later.